whenever we think of foreign direct investments, we don't consider our neighbors. We think it's Europe, it's Asia, it's America. I think we need a rethink around this issue. It is only normal and ordinary to look at the neighbor first before you go far. Let us invest in and with each other. Let us invest in and with each other. We all have resources that are endowed in our countries, but we're not exploiting them fast enough at a scale that will accelerate economic development in our countries and in our region. And the benefits of such is obvious. That's a need illustration. Yes, greetings everyone. That is what the young leader of Burkina Faso, Captain Ibrahim Traoré, has told the African leaders. He said that we know how to mine our gold, of course our resources, um, and uh, I don't understand why we are going to let multinationals come and mine it. In fact, we are going to withdraw mining permits. You see, the same issue has spoken to uh, Mr. Kainde Chilema, that when it comes to uh, foreign investments, we are looking to Asia and Europe instead of looking uh, in the continent of Africa or in neighboring countries. Let me ask you one question. Who uh, are investors in the Congo minerals? Go and do your searches. You find foreign companies, uh, those who are operating Democratic Republic of Congo. You see? Go and ask who are the investors in uh, oil in the continent of Africa. You find Total and other Mexons and other foreign companies. You can't find African companies. Why? Because when it comes to the issue of investment, the people of Africa, especially our leaders, they think that investors should be white people. When you are black like me, you are not going to get opportunity to invest in this continent. Let us convene our own meeting. Let us having Africa African Diaspora Summit. Then from there, let us discuss what can we do. Everyone, experts from different parts, whether in technology, agriculture, in mining, we have those people in the diaspora and even those who are in the continent. From there, give them opportunity. So I think this is a lesson and this is the uh, embarrassing speech to our readers and our readers must listen uh, this speech from Mr. Kainde Chirima. So, kings and queens, I would like to share the full speech, then I would come uh, to share my thought and also to hear from you from this speech after this uh, speech of Mr. Kainde Chirima. So, welcome and listen. ...on the African continent and also to contribute to the global security in our countries, in our region, on the African continent, and also to contribute to the global food basket. Very important. Addressing food security challenges is very, very key. We must continue transforming agri-food systems to become more resilient. Colleagues, I talked about climate change already, to be inclusive and to be sustainable so we can facilitate, we can promote the continuation of production systems, and more importantly, producing efficiently. One particular issue that stands out, one or two issues that stand out here, is the issues that we must focus on aspects of productivity. Most of our countries, in most of our countries, I repeat, our farmers produce food or industrial agricultural products at very low levels of productivity. We need to invest in research and development. We need to invest in technology and, of course, to learn from others, other regions, so we can import where necessary the technology and the research results that will enable us to help our farmers increase their productivity, to help our farmers and ourselves, in essence, to be more efficient. And to be able to value add the raw products, to be able to trade in these 
products from surplus areas into deficit areas. Extremely important. Regional peace and stability, and I want to focus on progress in regional stability. My colleague, our host, has already spoken about this, touched on it. Stability is crucial. Peace, security, stability is crucial for our economic development agenda, for our commerce agenda. Extremely important. We've seen the damage that instability does to our normal lives, to business, to our economies, and to opportunities for our young population in terms of jobs or indeed business opportunities. Peace, once lost, is difficult to recover. So commercial must continue, we must continue paying attention to the situations afflicting us in our individual countries and within the group. I must say peaceful elections were held in the Democratic Republic of Congo, in the Union of the Comoros, in Egypt, in Madagascar, in Rwanda, and indeed Zimbabwe. We send our congratulations to these countries for their democratic and remarkable achievements by hosting or holding elections and ensuring smooth transition from one leadership or management to another. Economic challenges and prospects, particularly the impact of global financial conditions. Due to global financial tightening and rising debt servicing costs, obligations, regional GDP growth slightly declined from 5.9% in 2022 to 5.7% in 2023. So we encourage ourselves to remain or to continue working towards improving our economic resilience capabilities so that we minimize the decline in growth and drive more higher growth rates and the benefits are known and they are obvious. Construction of the Commercial Secretariat Headquarters, progress made, some progress made. We've been able to mobilize in the past year $2 million from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to support the construction of the new Commercial Headquarters. Funds mobilization efforts will continue going forward because we need to get this project underway in a serious way. Priorities for the coming year. I'm being naughty here, knowing that I'm handing over and there's a new chair coming through, there's a new bureau coming through. But I think my mischief may be of some little value going forward to my dear brother, President Daishmir. Accelerating economic integration, as I said earlier on, must be one of and should continue to be one of our priorities. Prioritize, we need to prioritize deepening economic integration to improve intra-commercial trade an issue I've already raised in a few minutes earlier. This currently is standing at about 11 to 12 percent only. We all know in this call that Africa trades the least with itself. This is not acceptable. And Africa is about us these blocks, such as commerce, other regional blocks. So we need to make extra efforts to increase trade and I dare say investment amongst ourselves. The very important aspect. We need to do better in this area. Regional integration development. We need and we will continue, we should continue promoting the corridor approach to address regional infrastructure gaps, which I think is the most pragmatic way to do. One project, one infrastructure project normally does extend to two or more countries. And I think the concept of promoting corridors is a clever one, is actually an effective one. We must continue combating non-trade barriers non-tariff, I must say, non-tariff barriers, NTBs. We need to strengthen our political will, Your Excellency, to address the emerging issues around non-tariff barriers. 
this is hampering our efforts to deepen regional integration. It's actually a negative development, which we must watch very closely going forward and deal with decisively whenever these issues arise. Using trade to access, to, using trade to address insecurity is another matter that I would like to emphasize as I exit from the chair. We need to leverage cross-border trade. We need to alleviate poverty. We need to increase food production to ensure food security, not just in individual countries, but it's our collective responsibility to assist each other as a region in ensuring or assuring food security. In itself, is one of an insurance policy for ameliorating some conflicts that emanate from economic challenges, especially food insecurity. I did mention about investing together. I want to repeat this at some point. But I must say, going forward, promoting public-private partnerships is something we must put a premium on. We as a country, once we took office three years ago, we inherited a treasury which was impaired. And we had the debt mountain, we had to deal with the debt restructuring. And I must say that we've achieved a high measure of success in restructuring our debt, giving us a headroom to invest in many aspects of our people's needs. But one instrument that we're using and using effectively is the public-private partnerships where we do not rely on the national balance sheet to do big infrastructure projects. I would like commercial going forward to basically pay attention to this model of infrastructure development to mitigate the constrained treasury envelopes that we all are faced with, given the global financial situation which I mentioned earlier. So I want to ask ourselves to really, really examine closely this model so if it's accepted then Comesa can really make it integral to what we do on an ongoing basis. It also brings the private sector money on board which ordinarily may be difficult to be attracted in one or more of our countries. And when we work on the corridor concept this will even be much easier and quicker to complete projects. So, I would like to suggest that, as I said earlier, Your Excellency, that we must begin to say something to ourselves. Why are we not investing in and with each other more? What is the issue? Whenever we think of foreign direct investments, we don't consider our neighbors. We think it's Europe, it's Asia, it's America. I think we need a rethink around this issue. It is only normal and ordinary to look at the neighbor first before you go far. Let us invest in and with each other. Let us invest in and with each other. We all have resources that are endowed in our countries, but we are not exploiting them fast enough at a scale that will accelerate economic development in our countries and in our region. And the benefits of such is obvious. That's a need illustration. So I make a call going forward that we need to set up some instruments, some arrangements that will deepen our investment and trading with each other. As something that's going forward will become routine, it will become the norm rather than the exception. At this point, I really would like to say, if you will allow me, Your Excellencies, that there are things that we must consider as first steps. This is one of them, going forward. I think we've been missing this one for too long. We need to support each other and I want to express to countries that have given support 
to countries like ours in the time of the West Route in living memory. And it's important that we in our country reciprocate that when countries in Comesa are in need, whatever that need is, and we're capable of providing support. I think the spirit that we should grow within our Comesa region. In closing, I want to thank you, the Comesa member states. I want to thank the Bureau. I want to thank the Secretariat, Commercial Secretariat, and various commercial institutions for your support during our time in the chair of Commercial. The things that we've been able to do, we were able to do them as a team. So most, most appreciated on behalf of my country, our country, Zambia. I want to extend my, our warm congratulations to the new chair, Commerce Chair, incoming chair, President Daishmir. Thank you, congratulate you for ascending to this very important role in our region. Uh, yes, welcome back, kings and queens, ladies and gentlemen. It's my hope that you have heard a lot of things. And of course, many things have been uh, spoken, but I would like to concentrate on the issue of food security and also on the issue of our investments. Mr. Kaindi Chilema has said that uh, the time has come for Africa. Instead of looking to the foreign countries, Asian or European countries, let us first uh, focus on the African continent. When it comes to the issue of, of investments, I think we need it also to give opportunities to Africans. As you see in this map, my dear brothers and sisters, we have gold, we have uranium, we have everything. But ask yourself, can we uh, become investors in these resources as the people of Africa? Because these resources, all of them, are already taken by the Europeans, Americans, Asians. So Africans, we, are, we have nothing here. And one thing I want to share, and of course to argue to our brothers and sisters and all of us, the people of Africa, please, we have good people in the diaspora. We have people who have kept in the diaspora. We have people who have uh, technology in the diaspora. Please invite them, convene a meeting about investment. How we are going to invite our brothers and sisters in the diaspora to come and invest in our resources. For instance, my dear kings and queens, you see this China-Africa summit. What does that, that, that mean? That means that uh, Chinese are going to have access to our resources. So instead of having China-Africa summit, last year Africa summit, many summits, let us having our own summit, Africa-African diaspora summit, where we are going to share with our brothers and sisters in the continent and those who are in the diaspora and telling our brothers in the diaspora that this is the area where you can invest and make money. These summits, Europe, Africa summit, it means we are calling our, we are calling Europeans to come and invest. We are calling uh, Chinese to come and invest. So let us now stop these um, external summits. Let us convene our own summit. Africa African Diaspora Summit where we are going to share with our brothers and sisters in the continent in the diaspora and those who are in Caribbean about investment or investment opportunities uh, those are in our mother continent Africa from there I think we can start seeing that Africans black people are driving the economy of our African countries instead like we have today that our economy have been driven by the Europeans, Americans you see we have minerals um, still we are suffering, you know these um, westerners and Europeans uh, and other Asian countries they love us to tell us that they are coming to create uh, jobs, I think if we can allow Africans to add value, to process their own resources. Automatically, Africans will create their own jobs. We don't need to be hired by someone. We don't need to become uh, under Europeans or under Asians. Let us, we the people of Africa, take these resources as the young uh, president of Burkina Faso uh, did to withdraw uh, these mining permits and give 
these uh, mines uh, to the people of Burkina Faso. Other African countries can do the same. If we can do the same, we can create jobs to our young men and women. We can create um, investments. And we can, of course, create innovation and creativity among our people. And that's what always uh, we are addressing, that we, we cannot have creative people if our resources, our minerals are being owned by others. So, kings and queens, those are just my opinions. And I hope you have something to share with us. Please do it on the comment section. And also make sure that you share our videos to many Africans as you can, so that all of us we can have a clear picture. But one thing that I want to insist uh, to solve this challenge of thinking about foreign investors must become or must be Europeans or uh, Asians. Let us convene our own meeting. Let us having Africa African Diaspora Summit. Then from there, let us discuss what can we do. Everyone, experts from different parts, whether in technology, agriculture, in mining. We have those people in the diaspora and even those who are in the continent. From there, give them opportunity. Tell them that we are going to give you money. Make sure that you produce something. I think from there we can uh, solve this challenge. Without doing so, we will continue to lament, to cry like little babies that our resources are being taken and we do nothing. And of course, another thing that I want to insist, our leaders must believe in Africans. Stop this behavior of thinking that Europeans are those who are, or, are, or white people are the ones who are supposed to invest or to, uh, to do business in the continent or through these minerals. We have taken many Africans abroad in different parts, in different sectors. Let us call them that we have taken you to China, to Europe, to Russia to study. What have you studied there? Implement here. If we can do like that, I think we can move forward. So, kings and queens, let us not speak for too long. Let us make it short by saying thank you for your time. See you next time.